Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is gonna be a long reading vlog, um, an extended weekend. It is Thursday right now after work and I just wanted to read a few different things but I didn't want to risk dedicating like one video to a certain book because I've had a lot of books that I just wanted to put down lately. So we're just gonna um, do like a long weekend reading vlog. Obviously I work tomorrow, so I'll have Friday evening and then Saturday, Sunday, I have Monday off because of President's Day. So we're gonna have um, some fun this weekend. I hope I'm going to read some books that it's gonna give me back into the reading mood because I've been in a little bit of a slump. Right now we're gonna start off with Punk Love. This is a novella by LJ Shen and I think I think that name sounds super familiar. Oh, okay, wait. <laughs> she wrote Vicious, um, which I DNF'd last month, so we'll see. This is me editing this video. No, I did not read Vicious last month. I DNF'd Twisted Love. I thought the cover was the same. I was being judgmental, I'm sorry. I have read Vicious. It was problematic, but it was still fun to read. Punk Love is about, it says it's semi autobiographical. It's about high school. Um, there's like a bad boy and a good girl. It sounds like a cute love story that um, I think there's like trouble afoot. So we'll just try it out. I'm going to try the audiobook on Kindle Unlimited. It's available to anyone who has a subscription. Let's see if it's any good. Okay, so this is about a teenage girl named Laura. She feels like the odd one out in her town. She says that she doesn't have any misfits at her school which I find hard to believe because obviously you can't know everyone. Anyway, so this kid Ryan comes to her town and he's an anarchist. So she's like, wants to be his best friend just cause he's different. They actually do become pretty close friends. He's in a band. There's an asshole named Alex who is in the band with him. And of course that's going to be our love interest. I don't know, I like how this is written cause it sounds like a journal entry or like a letter. It is the main character speaking back on this time. And she's saying how you're not gonna like this story. Um, so obviously we can tell, well, I can tell as an adult who's met a few Alexes in their lifetime, that Alex is a dick. Um, he's described as a dick. Um, should I be saying dick on YouTube? <laughs> Even his friend or bandmate Ryan says that he's a butthead. Okay, let's say the word butthead. And by the end of chapter one, Laura says that she's done a lot of things just to get his approval, which yes, is cringe, but it's also so sad because that happens a lot, especially to young teens, myself included. Um, and so this is going to be a painful read just in in the cringy kind of way, but not cringe. Like this is cheesy, more cringe is like, oh shit, this has happened to me. So, <laughs> okay, wait, Alex is driving a Volvo, which is everyone knows Edward Cullen's car. So maybe this is Edward Cullen fan fiction. Okay, I'm pretty pissed off because I'm editing that footage and most of it, most of it you can hardly even hear because I'm wearing these stupid headphones. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not really even a vlog anymore, but here's me talking about it right after I finish the book. At least I know for the future that I cannot vlog with my headphones into my phone. Okay, I finished Punk Love. Wow, it was a lot more substantial than I thought it was gonna be before I read the book and even in the middle of the book. If you find teenage immaturity irksome, then, why did I just say it like that? Irksome, then I would hesitate before reading this just because, but then again, the author is writing from a perspective way older and she's like, acknowledging how immature she was. So I was able to kind of overlook that. Um, but wow, this book actually spanned years. So in a novella, we got to see the growth of a teenage girl into a woman. And that was amazing. I thought it was really good. And it was through the lens of this particular relationship that she had. So lots of big other things happened to her, but it's not the point of the story. The point of the story is this relationship. Yeah, that was one of the best novellas I've ever read. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't truly a drama. It was really just kind of like a snippet of time. I thought it was really 
well written in the sense that she was looking back on her life. I really enjoyed it. I have to say the audiobook slapped. Can I say that? Is that something that people still say, slapped? Oh, I went to go look for my phone. I filmed my videos on my phone. Um, yeah, the narrator, she was amazing. And I definitely recognized her voice. So I think maybe I'll look for other audiobooks that she narrates and maybe pick that one up next. I don't know what to rate this because the part that she was a teenager in this book was a little irritating. But then again, weren't we all irritating? That's part of the reason it was irritating to me because I was like cringing about my own annoying ass self. I was annoying, so I'm sure we all were. Or I'm sure we all remember ourselves way more annoying than we were, let's hope. It was such a good depiction of a young relationship, the ups and downs, how you grow apart and you grow different, but, and it doesn't always have to end super dramatically. Anyway, that's all you're gonna hear about this. <laughs> hey guys, it is Friday and I just finished work. I have a book expiring in my library. I keep going to grab my phone, it's right here. Um, it's called Such a Pretty Smile. Bless you. It's actually a horror novel. It's about, there seem to be two timelines, one with this daughter and one with a mother and they're both kind of being haunted in some way. I don't know, the description of this, it sounds like it's gonna get effed up. And I don't know if there's like paranormal activity happening or if it's more like a PTSD, like generational trauma kind of issues. But it sounds like it's gonna be really intense and dark. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. Wow, I am 25% in. We've stuck with the daughter's point of view um, this whole time. Her name is Lila. She has a, a friend who's a total bitch, but obviously she can't see that because she's in middle school. Um, but she has feelings for her friend. Her mom's name is Caroline and something is up with her. She's super overprotective. She's an artist and she has fled Louisiana at some point earlier in her life. There's also mystery in this book, which is pretty intriguing. There are young girls being murdered violently, graphically detailed in the book. Just a warning for anyone who doesn't like reading that stuff. Yeah, I'm getting Jennifer's body vibes and I'm very intrigued. Like this is really good and it's really well written. It's kind of spooky and creepy. And from the bat, like the opening scene is Lila shaving her legs, her mom, won't let her do it so she's doing it in secret and just like describing the blade running up her skin is just like you can tell things are gonna get creepy up in here things are gonna get gory Ooh, i'm so scared i've never read a book where i'm like scared i mean i don't read that much horror so i guess that makes sense but it's getting like it's nighttime now and i'm getting more freaked out Ooh. bro if i found my daughter under my bed like that? No. Like I get that mother intuition comes in and you wanna help your daughter, but no, no. I probably would've just died. I, I would've died. Okay, it's like 9.30 and uh, I'm gonna stop for now. I still have um, like two and a half hours to listen, but I'm gonna save it for tomorrow because I know shit's about to go down. Um, this is really scary right now. I don't know if it's just because it's dark or because I haven't read a lot of horror or maybe it really just is that scary. But yeah, it's funny because when we started the book and um, we first went to the point of view of the mother, Caroline, I was like, oh, this is kind of boring. And now I get immersed in that time period and Caroline as a main character and then I don't want to go back to Leela and then I read a little bit of Leela, I don't want to go back to Caroline. So I think that means that this is pretty well written. All right, I'm going to eat something chocolatey and watch Friends and make myself less freaked out. <laughs> It is Saturday and I just finished um, Such a Pretty Smile. I kind of wish I had just stayed up and read the ending because I think it would have been scarier. I don't know, I like reading books in one sitting when I can because it's just so concentrated. I did have a little shock. There was a tiny little plot twist and then it made a lot of sense when you thought about it and it's so funny because I wish I would have said 
something in the beginning of this just because I like it when I can kind of predict something but there's no way I could have predicted exactly how this was. Yeah, I, I like this book. It was very interesting. I like the mother-daughter relationship. I like the timeline differences um, and I liked that you were trying to solve a mystery that was you know 60 years in the making every 15 years yeah if you like scary stuff and you're in the mood to be kind of creeped out and if you like feminist type of fiction then i would definitely check this book out all the men sucked in this every single man in this book sucked it's around 145 so uh i want to see what else i think i want something a little lighter um, we'll see what else I'll pick up today. It's a little later. I've edited um, some of my footage. I've watched some TV and I'm trying to figure out what to read next. I've had Summer Suns here for a couple months now. It's on my TBR list for I think January. This is supposed to be kind of like a Raven's Boy situation, but it's in college. It's dark academia. I think there's some horror in it as well. So it doesn't sound light at all. <laughs> Good morning, it is Sunday now, and we are gonna take a little trip down to Barnes and Noble. There's only one on the island down in Honolulu, so we're gonna go down there, maybe get some food. I don't wanna spend too much money, but I'm gonna get one or two books, so it'll be a little mini haul. Okay, here's my little mini haul. I got two books that were on my February new release. Wait, do you want my books? No. Why not? Okay. Why don't you tell them about it? No. Come on, sit down. Um, you tell them about it. Sit down. No, babe. I'm, I have to do that mystery figure. It gives your channel something to wonder about. So these two books aren't supposed to be released until Tuesday, but Barnes & Noble had them in stock. So I purchased them and canceled my orders from Amazon. First one is Float. This is a YA contemporary romance. It's about a young girl who lives in Alaska. Her parents are getting divorced, so she's gonna stay with her aunt in Florida. It is for fans of Sarah Dessen, whom I am obsessed with and have been since middle school. So I'm hoping this is gonna give me some like throwback 2000 vibes. This I had um, pre-ordered and it wasn't supposed to get here until March 3rd. And now it's in my hands early so i'm wondering why this barnes and noble had books that are not even technically out yet this is about a post-apocalyptic story it's got um three young people and they hunt men <laughs> and harvest their organs or something crazy like that it's a horror novel then i saw take three girls this is by kath crowley simone howell and fiona wood I really don't know too much about it. It was in the young adult section, but I loved this kind of cover. It reminded me of Rookie Magazine, which I was obsessed with. This seems just to be about three girls in high school, um, a contemporary, I love that shit. And then I got Cultish, The Language of Fanaticism. This is a nonfiction about cults and how, you know, I guess just the science behind it and, and the kind of very formulaic formula <laughs> that they have. I can't talk, I'm sorry, we just ate food. But yeah, this cover is beautiful. I've heard great things about it. Um, can't wait to read this. And then my husband, he got two books. He loves Star Wars. So he got Star Wars, The High Republic, The Rising Storm, in case anyone's interested. And then he, <laughs> he got Azura Ghost by Essa Hansen. And I saw this number on the side. I'm like, this is the second book and he hadn't read the first one. So I ordered that one on Amazon right after we purchased this. This I think is science fiction. Not too sure it's it about, but if anyone has read it, let me know if it's good and I will let him know. Okay, it's around 2.30. So I'm gonna read some more of Summer Suns, which I did read a little bit more of this morning. And yeah, it's like a horror thriller, Gothic, Southern Gothic horror thriller. I'm gonna shut my mouth. But yeah, I'm gonna read this until Euphoria comes on because it is Sunday and in Hawaii, it comes on at 4 p.m. And this is the penultimate episode. If you guys watch Euphoria, let me know what you think of this 
season because it is effing crazy. I think this is the episode of Lexi's play and shit's gonna go down. I, I, I'm nervous about how stressful it's gonna be. Okay, I just finished that episode. Sorry if you don't watch Euphoria, but my God, I was so nervous. I was sweating. They did a to be continued. Next week is a finale. I am stressed. Okay, so I think for the rest of the night, I'm gonna keep reading Summer Suns. It is Monday. Um, I don't remember where I last left off, but I got halfway through Summer Suns. Basically, this is about a guy named Andrew. He's around 21. He's going to graduate school at Vanderbilt in Nashville. And his best friend, sort of his foster brother, got to Vanderbilt six months before him and since then has killed himself or seems to have killed himself. So it starts off really upsetting and even though you don't know the relationship between the two characters, you automatically, it's just like, it's heart-wrenching and damn, you really feel for Andrew here. So Andrew is going to Nashville to not even really interested in his you know education but to investigate eddie's death he has a roommate that is suspicious to andrew and this group of friends he's got you know classmates all these people that he needs to look into at the same time andrew and eddie something happened to them when they were i think like in middle school or something like that something in a cavern that curse them, we don't know anything about it even at the halfway point, that they can see spirits or ghosts. And Eddie's spirit is sort of haunting Andrew now. So yeah, that's what it's about. Um, I've been kind of picking it up and putting it down, first of all, because it is pretty intense and it is very moody. It's very dark and like kind of spooky. It's a Southern Gothic. It's also kind of a dark academia. It's like Ninth House by, what is it, Lee Bardugo? Um, it reminds me a lot of that, first of all, because you have these sort of ghosts and someone who can see them, but also they're in the setting of a college, but actually not much has happened so far with him in school. He's kind of skipped a lot. And this has been compared a lot to the Raven Boys. The only thing I'm really seeing here is there's a very boys club kind of energy in here, which is, both, you know, exciting because there's like homoerotic undertones and overtones all over this, but also the only girls that we've met in these books are like afterthoughts and they're always in relation to a guy. So that is kind of icky. The only other thing like the Ravens boys is that they like to race cars, which I, I'm not interested in hearing at all, first of all, because that kind of shit terrifies me. <laughs> Other than that, I am very interested to see like who killed Eddie. So I'm interested in the mystery of that, the mystery of how they came to be able to see these ghosts and whatever, um, you know, what happened in the cavern. I'm interested in that. We've gotten to the halfway point. It took halfway through this book for Andrew to come to the realization that these friends and their roommate are on his side. They're not the bad guys. And that was evident from like page 20. Um, so it is a little frustrating in the sense that it's like the author is trying to distract us from who the real culprit could be by following these red herrings, which are very blatantly obviously not the murderer. And also you can tell that this is going to be his found family and you just kind of want to skip through that part to have them, you know, support each other. Um, so it it is kind of a slow read, but it is very well written. Um, it's very poetic and lyrical, and there are some words in here I gotta look up. What was the, the one in the very beginning that I was like, whoa, vertiginous. Never even heard of that word. <laughs> so yeah, it kind of feels like a dark academia book just from having like random like scholarly words in here because you feel smarter reading it but um i'm gonna take a break because i feel like i've really tried to force myself to read this the past few days and i could force myself to try to finish it today but i'm not going to i know that the second half has got to be even better than the first half because of the fact that andrew's now not alone and that he has this little family that is gonna just get stronger 
and then the real mystery is going to start. But it kind of makes me frustrated because we could have come to that conclusion way sooner. Then again, I really did like reading just how this author wrote. That's going to be the end of this weekend reading vlog. I I hope this wasn't frighteningly long. Thanks for coming along with me and it made this weekend more fun. So that's always fun. Give this video a like if you liked it. Obviously that's what that's for. Oh God. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video.